Hi, it's Mike Howard again, author of Yast Kit. Today we're going to talk about creating a new site. Uh, first of all, we assume that you have a directory set up so that you can access it uh, using your web browser on your local machine. I have one here called Websites, and you'll see that the directory listing here matches the uh, directory listing that I'm getting when I access the URL HTTP colon slash slash websites. I've created another directory inside that called demo which will house my development site and within demo I have the uh, site framework with system uh, I have the, the package there, the, the tar file. Now there are a number of ways you can unpack a tar file. I'm going to use the command line tar command xcf site framework and when I do that it unpacks the two directories directly in the directory where the tar file is. What we're going to do now is drill down with the web browser into the private root into the installation subdirectory of the private root and we're going to bring up the configurator. YesKit has an extensive and quite difficult configuration file that has to be managed so we have this little tool which allows us to do it more or less easily. Uh, when you bring up the configurator there is a box here that has some information presumably it's relevant, I haven't read it recently it will go out of the way when you mouse out. Now, as everything is color coded. The red stuff is required. The site ID, in this case demo, is just the an ID string for the site. It really has to be uh, a solid character string like an identifier, your standard uh, PHP identifiers. The site domain will be demo in this case because I have it set up in my etc. host directory as I've explained in another video so that the web browser can locate the sites and without by not tagging uh, .com or anything else like that it doesn't have to be registered it just only exists on my machine. This is the uh, URL demo which uh, is used to access the site. This will be the development site as you can see up here now in this case there's a default value set. If you don't set this thing, if you at least leave it blank, it will be, uh, it will take HTTP colon slash slash www dot and then put the value of the domain name field which is the site domain up here, site domain, just demo. I don't want the www so I'm doing you know, the appropriate thing. Now I need a text string which will be used in titles and things like that. And the site installation here is a development site. You can set your time zone according to the uh, appropriate time zone parameters. You need an encryption key. We're going to leave that blank. And then the uh, configurator will create a random encryption key for you. The next piece, uh, we have to have the absolute file location for document root and private root. Now Finder is relatively handy doing this because if I click on private root it will give me a path but it's not really Unixy enough to put in here. Okay, So I'm going to do something really really cheesy. I'm going to go to my terminal window and you'll see that I'm in the demo directory. I'm going to type PWD, which stands for Print Working Directory Command, and that gives me the string, which is the absolute location of the directory that I'm sitting in. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to use the Command V command. Well, I highlighted everything. I used the Command C to copy it, and now I'm going to use a Command V to paste that in. Type a slash and type document root. I'm going to go to the next the next uh, fill in the blank and do the same thing except I'm going to put in private root. 
Okay. Now, system root we're going to leave blank because that's going to be a subdirectory of uh, the private root. If we go over here to and open up private root, you'll see that system is a subdirectory of that. We need an email address for the, uh, the site, and I'm going to just put in my local email address for webmaster info, etc., etc. I'm going to pick SQL Lite for my database, and I'm going to leave the rest of the stuff bl blank. The configurator will automatically fill in the database engine in the DB engine stream. And for SQLite, it will also create a path to a, uh, to a directory where it will keep the database. And I'm going to change the names of the cookies. There are three cookies that you have to have. I'm going to call this one uh, Demo Cookie. We have a thing called a Detector Cookie, which is... Uh, described in the code and in the documentation and various other things. I'm going to call this guy a detector. Detector. And then we need also a session ID cookie. Demo SID. And I'm, since this is my development version, I'm going to change the inactivity timeout from 300 seconds to 3,000 so that uh, good things will happen. And let's see, we've got some stuff for recapture, which I'm not going to put in. We also have some stuff for PayPal, which I'm not going to put in. We update the thing, and we get an advisory. Advisories are colored orange. It says that the save of the development configuration file did not work. It failed. So we're going to fix that. So I'm going to do a CD to private directory, private root, do an ls there, do a cd to installation, and there is a program here called fix perms, and that's used to fix permissions. We have this failure was a permissions error, so I'm going to type slash bin slash sh dot slash fix perms dot sh. Now this is the absolute path to um, a shell born shell, corn shell, whatever. I'm using an absolute path here because uh, there are some known Trojan attacks on computers that used to work anyway and sometimes still do. But, but uh, well, you can look it up. Now this is an interactive program. It's written in uh, Bash or, or Shell. And it has a little bit of information here, which you can read. It, in my case, the username and the group name for the uh, user which runs the web server is underscore www. Now, the reason that this failed, that this uh, save failed, is because I own the directory, the, uh, the directory personally. It's not and it's not writable by the user and group which are running the web server. So we're going to fix that. I'm going to say fix. It's not going to ask me for my password. This is the you have to have administrative privileges in order for this to work. And now I'm going to type quit. And now I'm going to click update one more time and this time the save worked. I'm going to show you what we actually have here. We go down to installation. There's another directory called config.dir. And inside that directory, we have a, uh, we have a file called config.php-development. Now that has just written a hideously big configuration file. And we happen to have that entire configuration file right here at the bottom of the configurator. That gets us a configuration for the 
for this uh, our system, but it doesn't get us an installed development system. So now we're going to go to the installer rater. Now the installer rater creates a bunch of files which allow you to do installations. And I'm not going to talk about all the fields. We're just going to say that this guy is active. We're going to say that the server root is at opt local Apache to uh, htdocs and the logs are at apt local Apache to logs. I'm going to save this and it writes one, two, three, four, five files. The one that we're kind of interested in is the local installation development. All of these guys work. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the installation directory and we're going to type bin sh run local install. And the first thing it does is it runs fixed permissions. I've already fixed permissions, so I'm going to type Q to quit. And it does a whole bunch of stuff. And now it should be all set up. The database should be set up. Notice that there is a directory here called SQLite underscore db dot d and inside that there is a database called demo and I have also uh, something we haven't gotten into but if we go back to installation and we do an ls on config dash dir there's a whole bunch of junk here there's an HD access and uh, an index, which has already been installed. Local install did that. It also installed the HD access. Uh, and some other stuff. It has a thing for making tar files of the entire site so that they, you can do your alpha and production installations on your remote server. And then there's this really nice guy here, which is a vhost uh, config dash vhosts, which is the block of code that you have to stick into the virtual host definition for your site. Now, I've already done that, and I've already set up etc. host so that the URL http colon slash slash demo points to this directory. Well, well it points to a, a bunch of stuff, and you see the other video for that. So I'm going to bring up another thing. Let's see if it worked. Well, for those who are involved in the software game, you know that there are never enough bugs. And I found another one, or two or three, which I had fixed and had, never, had not anticipated. <clears throat> Let's try it now. I think I've got everything fixed. Demo. Boom. There it is. Now this is the generic home site. It's got a little secondary menu with some choices. These are just stubs. They don't actually do anything. Uh, we have some articles. But what I want to show you is login. The, this brand new fresh account comes with an administrator and the password is admin. Actually, you should change that. Let's get you back to the home article. Then there's this cute administrative menu that allows you to do things like manage your accounts. The only account currently is an administrative account, but if you want to create a new account, you click there and fill in all of this stuff. If you don't click submit, nothing good, nothing happens. Uh, we'll take a look at articles. See, this is all filled in. These are all infrastructure articles, so if I want to modify my home page, all I have to do is select that guy. This is my new home page. That should be exactly what you want. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a, a familiar editor. And that's about it. <clears throat>